Queen Anne's County is a member of the Baltimore Regional Transportation Board. In 2010, when the U.S. Census uh, counted the population, parts of Queen Anne's County were designated as urbanized areas. Generally, it's a portion from the Bay Bridge along the 50 corridor to the 5301 split. That designation of an urbanized area required that Queen Anne's County um, be a member of the local metropolitan planning organization. In order to program the, the federal dollars, the Baltimore Regional Transportation Board is required to have a series of plans. They're required to have the long range plan, which is maximized 2045, which is what tonight's meeting is about. So basically what we're doing here is asking for public input on three different documents. And these are documents that an organization called the Baltimore Regional Transportation Board is responsible for developing. The Baltimore Regional Transportation Board is a metropolitan planning organization for the Baltimore region. That's a federal requirement. Every major metropolitan area in the country has a metropolitan planning organization. And this board is the decision-making policy as to how to allocate the federal funding for bridges and roads and transit projects that come into the region. So every four years, every metropolitan planning organization has to do a long-range transportation plan. That plan sets out the broad goals that the region wants to achieve in terms of transportation and mobility. Um, and it also takes a look at the amount of revenue that we can expect to have over the next 25 or so years to help pay for these projects. Um, flowing out of that is a short range program called the uh, Transportation Improvement Program. So you've got the long range plan, the short range plan, and then the third document that we're asking the public to take a look at and comment on is the air quality conformity determination. As, as probably is not too surprising, the Baltimore region has an issue with ozone pollution and they have to meet certain federal requirements to be in conformity with those standards. So there's a determination done every time we do one of these plans to make sure that the projects that are added do not add to the air quality or the pollution problem. This board talks about the particular goals that the, the BRTB has established, just broad visionary type statements about what the region would like to accomplish in terms of transportation. There's a board over here about the kinds of demographic trends that we can expect to see over the next 45 years, and your household growth, growth rate, population growth rate. All of these factors figure into how people are going to move around because it determines where people are going to work, where they're going to live, how they move around, how all those factors work together. This particular map shows the short range program. It's a transportation improvement program that covers the period from 2020 to 2023. These projects are all something that's in currently in progress. It's all projects that, has, uh, that have uh, committed funds, committed schedules. We know they're going to happen. Um, and this gives you an overview of where those projects are in the region. I mentioned that the long range plan was another document we're asking for input on. That long range plan we've decided to call Maximize 2045. It covers the period from 2024 to 2045. And it's projects that are large scale. Um, in some cases, they're, they're more conceptual in nature. We uh, don't know on, in every case when the projects might happen or even if they'll happen. Uh, we don't know exactly what the funding is going to be, but this is our best snapshot we have at the time given the amount of funding that might be available, the cost estimates for these projects, and what future conditions might be. And then finally over here are the projects in Maximize 2045 that are in Queen Anne's County. Um, for this go around, Queen Anne's County submitted two projects for consideration and both of those projects were selected for inclusion. And they are Maryland 8 widening and Maryland 18 widening. And you can see on the map exactly where the locations are for those projects. So, um, the other document is the air quality conformity document. I mentioned that the, the, all these projects have to be uh, submitted to modeling and analysis to make sure that they're not going to add to the air quality issues that we have in the region. And the current modeling that was done has indicated that those projects will not add to the air quality problems. So they're all good as far as the state uh, and Maryland Department of the Environment is concerned. As of the 2010 census, uh, the Census Bureau determined that 
this part of Queen Anne's County was part of the Baltimore urbanized area. There was enough of a flow back and forth between uh, Anne Arundel County and other parts in the Baltimore area to Queen Anne's County that this is now considered part of the urbanized area. Because it's part of the urbanized area, then it becomes part of the, the way that the region looks at how people move. It becomes part of the federal funding that gets allocated to the region. Um, so that's why this particular portion of the county is part of the region that's under the jurisdiction of the Baltimore Regional Transportation Board. For Queen Anne's County, what this means, participation in the plan and putting projects in the plan will help move projects forward to get them to funding and eventually to construction. The project we put in the plan calls for the widening, um, looking at widening and improvements from the Kent Narrows all the way to uh, Chesapeake Bay Business Park, the whole length of uh, Route 18 um, on Kent Island. The second project that we included in the plan was um, improvements along Route 8, starting at the Chesapeake Bay Business Park heading south to Davidson Road. The, um, looking at the widening, uh, uh, the dualization of Route 8 along that entire section, and then improvements that can be done on the overpass to make things flow better. Also looking at pedestrian improvements in order to move people from um, the north side of, of Route 50 to the south side, potentially maybe a pedestrian overpass um, to connect the North Island or the Cross Island Trail with the South Island Trail, um, and making uh, trail improvements there so people can uh, have an alternative to using their car. If people want to find out more about the Kent Island Transportation Plan, they can go to uh, the Queen Anne's County Government website, qac.org, um, and under the Department of Public Works, um, there's links to the Kent Island Transportation Plan.